Okay. Now, this is going to give the IV, AV guys a little bit of a challenge. My notes are going to be up there. My, de my uh, samples are going to be over here, so you can watch both ways. Okay, so let's get this rolling. <laughs> Cute, eh? Okay, we're going to talk about cheese boards tonight. Um, this cheese board here I showed when we did the cutting boards. I used it as an example of how to um, apply the oil. And then later on I brought the, the cheese knife in, um, and we ordered about 60 cheese knives. So since then I've had some questions about how to build this, the design. So I'm going to go through this, the, the design and the building of it, um, and that's just going to be kind of like a, a mini cutting board review. So that. Now I have another one that I do with a router. It's kind of a little different. Um, and I kind of run through the steps of that one too. And the other thing is some show and tell of mine. And then I see some guys have brought some in too. So um, that's what we're going to do. Why make cheese, cheese boards? They're easy to make. They're cheap as all get out. You can use the scraps in your, your shop um, all over the place. There's lots of different designs. You go on the internet, there's thousands of them. So your imagination goes wild. So what I use them for is hostess gifts. You go to somebody's place for dinner, you take a bottle of wine. Thank you very much. You take this, wow. So that's one of the big things I use it for. Um, I'm always looking for hostess gifts. This is the latest this year. Um, I'll show you next week what I'm doing from now on in. So, the great stocking stuffer, secret Santa gifts, and it's a good sell seller if those guys who are so inclined to sell, which is not me. So, now this design came from um, negative number two. A guy named Steve Good. Steve sends out a, a weekly, um, a daily blog, all on scrolling, a whole bunch of different designs, and cheese boards do not have to be end grain. When you're cutting all the time, you want your grains up so the knife goes in, itself heals itself, but a cheese knife's not going to cut anything. So what? So you can make them straight. And this is the one I did based on the design that came from Steve Good. You can find them at, at scrollsawworkshopblog.ca. You sign up for the, the email. You get a lot of scrolling um, patterns day after day. A lot of them they just chuck. But he does have a, a catalog, a free pattern catalog, two, 3,000 patterns up there. If you go to the one that says kitchen, you'll see the one that's on that side there. And so this is the one I made. It's exactly the same piece of cherry I had sitting around it for a few years. You apply the pattern, you cut it out, and it's that. That's how the pattern comes, comes to you. He gives you some details, and uh, that's been finished with mineral oil and some wax. I, do, I have a 50-50 beeswax mineral oil that I apply to it a couple times after the mineral oil has dried a bit. So that's this sample here. I don't know if you want to see it or not, but it's, it's, it's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is, since I got this design, this is the one that everybody said, oh, isn't that cute? But I thought I would go through, review how I went about designing this one. This is a little different than the, the first one because I used three different kinds of wood that I had sitting around the shop. I had some cherry that was quarter by quarter, about 18 inches long. I had some maple that was about three quarters by a little more than an inch and a quarter. And I had some Peruvian walnut that I picked up at Rockler in the U.S. Um, cheap as all get out. Four foot piece by three by three quarters was three dollars. So um, I just bought it because it was there. So I used it and cut it. So step one is I use a program called CB Designer cutting board designer. It's available on the internet. Anybody wants the link, let me know. I mentioned this when we did cutting boards. 
um, that I couldn't get it to work on Windows 8. Well, there is a fix to do that. Let me know. I'll give you the link to where you go on Lumberjocks to, to make it work on 8.1. And what's really neat about this is depending on the wood you have, you can lay it out in the sequence. I have cherry, maple, walnut, cherry, maple, walnut, cherry. And it tells you how to lay up your strips and then what it's going to look like after you cut your other strips and make your end grain. So um, it really um, is fun if you've got lots of different ones. If you're making cutting boards, it's the, way, it's the easiest thing to use in the world. So um, if you want help on that, let me know. Okay, step one. You take all your boards, and this is what you do in a, a cutting board too. Take them all, cut them to the, the right widths. In this case, it's one and a quarter for the cherry, three quarters for the, the maple and walnut. You cut them one, two, three. Then you turn them flat on your, your, your uh, scroll and your uh, table saw and cut them all to the same height, same as you do when you're cutting your, doing your cutting board. So you get them all at one and a quarter. Next step is you glue it up in a block. Do, 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 do nice and tight, let it sit overnight, and then you can uh, put it through the planer because you're now not talking about end grain, you're talking flat grain, and that's your, your piece. So that's the most, you know, nice and tight, where to go. Now, the next thing you want to do is cut the strips off of this so it's exactly the same height as you're going to make your little deal. So this is going to glue up across the top so I can put the pattern on there. I have a little tip on how to do that. It's called, you know, a short router fence. Same, same principle. Now, that's me turning on my... You can push them through. You don't get any binding off of the, the, uh, the fence like you do when you do your cutting, your cutting boards. And you can whip them around, and you should avoid, if you're doing fast enough, you should avoid the, the burning up. So that's a little tip about using that stop block so you don't have anything between the blade and your fence. Makes life easy. So just to explain that again, I put that between the saw, put my stop, stop block, move the stop block back, and then just start running this through. Boom, 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 boom. Now, when I, this was 18 inches long, this is going to give me enough for about th three different cutting boards. So, uh, so that, that avoids getting burnout. You do get some. There's one that I got right there. So, after you cut all your strips, which you have lots of, you now start to glue them together. Reverse every one so you you get your pattern happening. I don't know if I can show that. The pattern's going to happen like this. You can see it down there. You glue them down. And you glue your pattern to the top. So that it's on here. And then, this is not the hardest scroll saw job in the world. The two eyes are quarter inch drills. There's only two cutouts in there. You can put big, big starter holes, cut around with a scroll saw, cut the, the top part with a scroll saw, and away you go. It's not too hard. It's round over the top and the bottom with quarter inch round over. That's what I tend to do. That gives you this look. Um, you can do it with one eighth. And you sand, because you got end grain, and you sand some more, and you sand some more. Um, and then you finish it. And my choice is still mineral oil. I put a couple coats of mineral oil in, make sure it penetrates practically through. I let it dry, and then I have a mixture of 50% mineral oil, 50% beeswax. Put it on, let it dry a couple of days, and I buff it with a, a lambsful for an auto lambsful thing. And it comes out not too bad. So it's, it's this one's only, I think, has one coat on it. So that's the one I made specifically to show you how it went. So there it is there. And I have, as I say, a whole whack of different 
thicknesses, um, depending on what wood I have. Everything from a little guy. It's not big and it wouldn't hold any cheese at all, but it'd be a nice coaster type of thing. Did that by mistake. So I just was using up some leftover stuff. Here's one with little little spots. They're three quarters by three quarters. I was using all three quarter inch lumber. So it's that's why you've got more going across and more going down. And then I have another one. And this one's somewhat thicker. And that's why you have to adjust your strips to be the thickness of this wood. Piece of wood that I got up at Peacock's out of their their bin. Um, and that was real walnut. And that finishes up much better than that Peruvian stuff. So that's that one, the one with the cheese head on it. Comes from the, if you ever need the, pa the, the pattern, let me know. You know, if you don't get have internet access, I have lots of that inter internet. So, okay, so I'm now going to talk about a different design. Doesn't use a scroll saw. Uses a lot of router bits, and this is the look of it. And you can see, um, it's kind of an oblong shape, and those those divots in there to hold the the olives. Showed that to my wife. She didn't want the divots for the olives, but she had another idea, and which I'll show you. So this comes from a guy named Steve Ramsey, woodworking for Mere Mortals. Um, Post a new video up every week. Some of them are corny. Some of them are nice little projects. They're short videos, five, ten minutes. So he's well worth uh, um, doing it. If you go to his site or go to the YouTube, where he shows you how to do this, there's about a five-minute video. It's pretty quick. Um, and the pattern is there. So, so what you get, I get the pattern, and then I, I had a bunch of alternating woods. Um, and it's stuff that I had downstairs, not quite positive where it all came from. It's maple, cherry, and this is and you have a big square about yay big. So, easiest thing, I cut the pattern onto the, the piece of Baltic birch, quarter inch, um, and I'll use that later on with my routering. Next thing I, I do is I copy that onto the pattern, and then I trace it on the pattern, and create the patterns for the inserts. My wife decided that she didn't want that, but she wanted a single round one so I could put a, uh, a bowl on there so it wouldn't move. Okay, so it's a little ceramic bowl. We'll sit on there. Will not move. So if it's, so, so I had to create the pattern for that. And it was a very simple round hole on there. Now, my router, that was for something else. That was that. So that, that goes around there. So that was my pattern for, for doing this divot type of deal. I router out the divot, and I use, I think they're called the bull nose router bit. Um, and I ha use it with the bushings. The problem with my bushing, it's a half inch. It goes way, you know. So I have to come down, way down here to get through it. It's kind of tight, but it, it came, to, what do you want? <laughs> All right. Okay, there it is there. So it's a very, it's simply a matter of tracing it around with your plunge router going out and then hogging it all out. When you hog it out, you don't do a very good job. And I'll show you what I did to fix that problem later on. You get some burn marks and you get. So the next step is to mount this pattern onto your block. And I used two-sided tape. Probably used way more than you needed because it was hard to get off. So mount it on. And what I do is I, I have a reverse, uh, I have a 
bottom mounted, as I put it there, right, get it? Right there. A bottom mounted pattern uh, bit. That way I can use it on my, my router table. I have more control. It's much um, safer than doing it the other way around, for tracing it this way, from my point of view. So this is one I've had for quite a few years. I used it. The reason it's so big, I did some big stuff a few years ago, some big round arches, and that's why it's so big. wasn't the sharpest in the world, but I did it. Okay. And then what I do is, because I'm not the best on the bandsaw, I cut it as close as I can, about an eighth or less, but it's not perfect. So when you do it on the router, man, you've got this nice and smooth. Around, there's nothing there. Um, and it comes really nice. It follows this pattern exactly. So that's my idea. Now, I said I'd sand out the inserts. One of the things that you get from... Some from your um, wood, uh, wood lathe days, is you get these. This is used for power sanding. Has these little feathered things on it. Fits in that hole just perfectly. Sanded it out like in no time at all. So if you you don't get you can get these at Lee Valley wood chuckers. Um, it's great for divots. I use it for power sanding on my bowls, but it's just one of those little cute things that you get. Now, I had to, it's, I'm going to lie, you get some burning. You've got end grain, side grain, whatever. You've got to sand the edges. I do it on my spin, spindle sander, and I also have my uh, um, flexible um, drum. Did this absolutely fabulous. Just a one pass around, and it was all nice and smooth and away to go. And then you sand, and you sand, and you do some more finishing. Same, same as this. But it does, because you only you don't have any end grain, it comes out extremely smooth. And I'll pass that around. So that's the piece there with the little insert in. So. I'm real happy with the finish. So. Maple, cherry, walnut if it's good, good. You can use Purple Heart, but and it, Purple Heart turns out really great color, really lovely, but it is hard to work with. It is hard, hard. <laughs> okay? So I'm going to do a little show and tell. Not going to spend a lot of time about how to do how I did them. Just got to find the right one. As I said, you, you can do just straight wood. Take that to somebody, they'd be really happy. You know, this is a piece of mahogany I got over, over at uh, um, Woodchuckers. I think it was 3.95, and it was actually a much bigger piece. Cheap. But in order to enhance a little bit, I did a quarter inch um, inlay. And that's a beveled inlay that actually came out of that piece of wood. So with that piece in there is that big. So uh, that was my very first inlay. It was uh, a bit of a challenge, um, and it is. And I didn't do it twice; I only did it once. So I will pass it around, and you'll see the little nail holes that I had to fill, the little holes I had to fill in. So, right? No. Yes. You'll notice there's two boards in here, two three-eighths inch boards, and this is a three-eight. Oh, no, I was going to let you figure it out as it went around. Because, can you see, can you get up close to that? Can you see the, the, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll pass it around. You can take a look at the, the join. It, it, and it wasn't hard to do. Okay. Now, this is another Steve Good pattern. Um, no, it all fits in a box. I was, not, was looking for something to do one afternoon, went on to Steve's, Steve's 
site, saw this little, they'll turn it out in no time a lot. That's hemlock. Um, and showed my wife, and she says, you're not giving that away. That's mine. So, little cute thing. Well, you guys wouldn't talk. You would... <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's finished with wipe-on poly. That hemlock is 150 years old. It came to the house from a house I restored. And if you don't seal it, it smells. So... <laughs> That's, I just did it with uh, wipe on poly. You know, it was a 20 minute job at the most.